Advanced Data Structures Review When programming, there are many resources available to help in assisting in the development of your code. There are resources known as libraries and application programming interfaces that provide both pre-written code to use in programs and an interface to enhance connectivity. Programming libraries contain pre-written code in the form of global variables and procedures that are available to the programmer. Oftentimes, libraries may need to be imported into a program before using any procedures from the library, but the small addition of an import statement in a program can save the programmer a great amount of time and effort. Commonly used libraries include a math library, a random library, a string library, and many more. The math library, for example, provides procedures that quickly enable a programmer to find the square root or raise a value to the power of an exponent. An application programming interface, or API, acts as an intermediary between a program and another piece of software. The API then allows communication between the two. The communication is established between the two by building protocols and outlining directions for how communication should occur. An API specification is an outline on how to build the connections between a program and another piece of software. Advanced data structures in programming come in handy with more complex problems to solve. Although this review course does not go into depth about how to code each of the types of data structures, the Praxis exam expects you to be able to conceptualize each of the structures we'll review. Stack, queues, and dictionaries and maps will be the three primary advanced data structures that we'll discuss, and as we mentioned, your primary focus and understanding of each of these structures should allow you to visualize a scenario that best represents the logic of the algorithm. Queues are linear data structures that follow a particular order for processing. Queues can hold a variety of types of data within them. We can visualize a queue using the diagram below. Key positions in a queue are the first position and the rear position. In the visualization below, 37 is held in the first position and 2 is held in the rear position. A queue stores data and follows a pattern. If a new item needs to be added, it will be appended to the rear of the queue, here, next to the 2 that is currently held in the rear position. Where a queue differs from other advanced data structures is in the removal of items from the queue. The process of removing items from a queue follows a first-in, first-out pattern, meaning 37 would be the first item removed from the queue, followed by 31, then 26, and so on. When items are removed from the queue, they can be processed or executed depending on the type of item. Queues are used in programming when operations don't need to be immediately executed, but when they are processed, follow the first-in, first-out procedure. A few scenarios where using a queue would be useful are data transfer that is unsynchronized and input is received at a different rate that output is sent, call centers receiving phone calls from customers and keeping them in an ordered list to speak with each customer in the order in which the call was received, and standing in line at a bakery to order and receive goods, where the first one in line is served first. A stack is another linear data structure that also processes its data in a specified pattern. All additions and removal from a stack occur at the top. If a new item is added to a stack, it is added at the top. If an item is removed from the stack, it is removed from the top. This process of appending and removing items from a stack is known as last in, first out. Stacks are used in programming in operations where when they're processed, follow the last in, first out procedure. A few scenarios where using a stack would be useful are, consider a stack of books. The top book is placed on the stack and must be removed first to prevent the stack from collapsing. Consider a stack of tennis balls in a can. The topmost ball goes in last and must be removed first to access the rest of the tennis balls. If every position in a stack held one letter in a word, the letters would be removed thereby reversing the word. Dictionaries and maps in this review course will have similar structure 
as there is controversy between the two depending on what programming language is being used. A dictionary and map use a key to value system to store data and reference the data. This is typically done in a one to one manner with one key referencing one value. This is very useful in the programming world as it allows for a key to be any type of data so that a key would not be limited to an integer index value as it is with arrays or lists. If a list of people's names were used as keys in a dictionary or map and you were looking to obtain the value they referenced, the name of each person could be used to output the value. Using the key Sarah, the data structure would reference 87. Using the key Katie, the data structure would reference 98. There can only be one key in the entire dictionary or map structure. Duplicate key names will be overridden in the structure so that the key name only appears once.